thanks to all of you for being here today, and also to the students for their leadership. You know, when the Senate is, is, you dig into so many different things, you have to, right? That's the way governance works. And, and this idea of where creation and innovation comes from is obviously an important part of what Berkeley is about as well. You know, even at the mission level, ultimately, I mean, we used to describe the mission of a great research university as three things, teaching, research, and service. But in fact, those are more how and what. The deep why, the mission, I mean, if we're going to talk mission, then that's about why. And why is about impact. And what we're talking about here today, innovation and entrepreneurship, is a really important way that Berkeley has impact on the world. It's not the only way, but it's a very important way. So it's, it's that mission relevant, and I just wanted to make that, that connection. So um, I have a couple of slides. If we can get my first slide up, that would be great. Um, there are, so just a few quick things on, on my role. So, so, so this, it's a mouthful. Chief Innovation and Entrepreneurship Officer is not a role that existed three years ago. Uh, it's Berkeley's, Berkeley's a distributed creativity place. I mean, this, the, the so-called ecosystem for innovation and entrepreneurship is, is something that's been developing for decades, obviously. Uh, but part of it is, you know, can we bring a little intentionality to it? So I think that's why my role was created. There are other universities that are starting to create this, this same role. And Berkeley eschews centralization, so the idea that, that I have any formal control over anything, or even any budget, uh, is, is not true. But we are having great fun in my office, and there are a bunch of people naturally that I'm working with. So I'm going to start with this slide. You know, we, uh, one of the people I work with, Laura Hasner, created this simple time lapse. It's sort of like, in the year 2000, if you had to describe what the ecosystem for innovation and entrepreneurship looked like, um, and, and you know, it doesn't have like very specific thing, you know, the College of Engineering. I mean, you'd say, well, that's important for this ecosystem. So this is just like very specific innovation and entrepreneurship stuff. And uh, it doesn't make any sense anymore for me at, at, at my stage of life to say, 2000 wasn't that long ago, but, but it really wasn't that long ago. And if you look at 2000, there are a few things on there, but not very much. Next slide, please. Here's what it looks like today. Uh, if we can get there. Okay. Um, there it is. Okay. It's on that side. Uh, look. Impressionistic. I'm not going to go through any details here. That's not important. And by the way, this deck is up on our website if you want to you find it. But, um, there's a lot there. We're adding two or three things to this, like like everything. Um, how about next slide? So so things are again. This is this distributed, this distributed creativity that I talked about that, that is working. So um, how do we think about? Why, why don't we advance that side? How about one more slide? And then this is my last slide. And then there are a couple of things. I just want to give you some sense. So pitch book look. When we think about innovation and entrepreneurship, we have to think about it in the public sector. We have to think about it in the civic sector. And people naturally think about it in the private sector. But we really, you know, if entrepreneurship and innovation are for all, then they have to be for all sectors. This happens to be just the private sector slice, and this happens to be just the institutional funded slice, i.e., did you receive venture funding or not? But what PitchBook does is it says, of all those venture funded companies, how many of them had a founder? They've got an undergraduate degree from Berkeley. So my undergraduate degree from Berkeley it was a number of years ago. Um, I'm not I'm not on this list, but but a number of people are. But but if you look at that, if you can see the data there, um, number three and number four are well. This is all undergraduates. This is this is this is kind of they have other rankings, but this is the one that everybody pays attention. Um, you can see that number three and number four are are well back. They're like 20 percent back. And by the way, on that top, on that number, you can see how close those top two numbers are. But Berkeley, they do this ranking every year. And this just came out a week ago, so these are fresh data. But a year ago, we were 54 behind, and now we're six behind. So the delta is, is looking good. But the important thing here is, look, Berkeley's a big, wide, incredibly creative place. And the energy that that's generating, not just for translating the ideas that, that Berkeley's coming up with into benefit to society, but also created tons of opportunity for our students. And for example, some of you know this, maybe you don't all know this. I saw somebody with a Skydeck shirt on. Skydeck launched about two years ago a new platform, a new platform called the ACE program, Accelerating Careers in Entrepreneurship. So the, the, the head of, of Skydeck, Caroline Winnett, a serial entrepreneur herself, 
is one of my direct reports. You'd think I would know what's going on. I asked her about six months ago, hey, last year, last academic year, how many students did you place in internships, in the ACE program? I thought she was gonna say 50, 70. She said 800. 1,400 undergraduates showed up at their two information sessions to learn about what internship opportunities Skydeck might be able to pro provide. So it is phenomenal how rapidly things are evolving on this campus, other freight research universities as well, but there's just no question about what's happening here at Berkeley. And again, I think ultimately it's like, this is a public research university. And what we are talking about here is mission advancing. And making sure those two things fit comfortably in your brain is actually very important. There are places too far I think there are certain things that people would say, if Berkeley's gonna go there, that's too far, that's too commercial, that's too whatever, right? And part of my job is, let's make sure we're doing things consistent with Berkeley's values and what Berkeley represents. And, and to the best of my knowledge, that's certainly true. Okay, in a couple minutes that I have left here, let me, let me say a couple things about what's next. What's next, so here's the mantra. The mantra for my office, or a bunch of people that I work with, is this, no more one-offs. We're in the platform building business. We are advancing Berkeley's capacity to deliver innovation and entrepreneurship by building platforms. And the starting point of that is taking this wonderful distri distributed creativity that I was talking about before and pulling it together in some fresh ways so it's more valuable, so it's, it, it's uh, more than the sum of its parts, as, as we say. The ACE program is one example. There are other undergraduate internship programs that we're connecting to the ACE programs, that they're internship programs specifically in startups. QB3, the Institute for Quantitative Biology has one and some others, all right. But let me mention two others and then I'll stop. So these are platforms. Here's a platform, we were just talking about this, Bill and I. Um, the Berkeley RIC, the Research Infrastructure Commons. If you Google Berkeley, RIC, Research Infrastructure Conference. Here's the idea, all right? Under, under utilization, automobiles, Uber, Lyft, share economy. Under utilization, built environment, Airbnb. Question, what is the percentage capacity utilization of scientific instruments at Berkeley? How about on a Sunday? Web-based app, mobile app. I'm a startup, I'm not even in the Bay Area. I need a mass spectrometer. I can access, access one on a Sunday, it's a leap price. DocuSign click-through contract. Doesn't have to go through risk, oh my God, what insurance do I need to be able to use that machine? Doesn't have to go through, through legal, doesn't have to go through business contracts. It's fully priced. 21 labs have put themselves on the, on the platform. The platform exists. It's gonna go nationwide and Berkeley's leading. Sort of, wow. The share economy for scientific instruments. Not to take away from Uber and Lyft, but if you increase the efficiency of utilization in our nation's automobiles, that's a cool thing. If you increase the efficiency of utilization of this nation or this world's scientific instruments, that's purpose. So, we built it, we're scaling it, and it's super exciting. All right, another one, real quick, last time. And it's another one of these platforms. By the way, the, these, these 10 or so platforms, if you want to know more about them, just email me, lions at berkeley.edu, my last name, L-Y-O-N-S at Berkeley. And I'll send them to you. They're also on the website, but I'll, I'll send them to you. All right, one more. How do you build a more inclusive, wider, more inclusive vision for how we teach entrepreneurship on campus? Like, let's do another entrepreneurship class. Right, like LNS5, for those of you that are letters in science, like, yeah, we need that sort of stuff. But let's be honest. Words like entrepreneurship, founder, innovation, venture capital, these are not very inclusive words. There are a lot of 18, 19, 20 year olds, or however old, that do not see themselves in those words. They do that, other people do that. You can't be what you can't see. So we launched, I'll tell you what the, what, the, what the platform is called, but we launched a program two years ago, summertime, the summer 2020, so two and a half years ago now. We launched a course that is in this spirit, hadn't been taught before, over 500 incoming students took the course. It exploded. They saw something in, in this path, in this vision that they were excited about. All right, 
What was the course called? It was called The Berkeley Changemaker. Berkeley Changemaker. We now have 22 courses in the Berkeley Changemaker program. In two and a half years, 20%, roughly 20% of Berkeley undergraduates have enrolled in a Berkeley Changemaker course. It is exploding. We've designed a minor. If the minor gets approved, which it should this year, we think in a few years, 55-0% of Berkeley undergraduates will take at least one Berkeley Changemaker. And if somebody said, paint the picture, how about this picture? 17-year-old, three years from now, in St. Louis, Stockton, Sao Paulo, wherever, and she says, I have to go to Berkeley. That signature narrative, I'm not seeing anything near that clear from Michigan, Princeton, Maine, and I have to go to Berkeley. So that's kind of what the horizon looks like. Again, platforms, the Berkeley RIC. We were doing some of this before. If you mentioned the Berkeley RIC to another university, they'd say, we do a bit of that. And you would say, yeah, and MP3 files existed when Apple built the iTunes store. That's why platforms are platforms, right? And also this Berkeley Changemaker. It's like, it's not like there wasn't any course that looked anything like this. But you put it together, you create it. Okay, so that's what we're working on. And you're going to have some fun today. So thanks for coming.